Hello and welcome to Production Bytes. I'm your host, Veronova, and this episode I'll be continuing on from last episode, covering how to produce contemporary vocals. Last episode I covered the tuning of vocals in Melodin and how to use Melodin, and this episode I'll be covering the editing inside your DAW and mixing of the vocals. So in true television style, here's one I prepared earlier. And these two muted stems are my pre-edited stems, which are from the final track. Whereas these two are fresh, tuned up vocals. So the first thing you need to do once you've got into your DAW is have a listen to the two vocals and just decide whether they sound in time with the track and whether they sound in time with each other. Raise your breath at the midnight dawning Raise your hands to the DJ calling Raise the spirits in this midnight mass Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? Cause... And that vocal sounds pretty much perfectly in time. So what I'm going to do now is solo that vocal and then I'm going to reference it against the other vocals. Because small discrepancies in one vocal are just going to sound natural within a track, so long as it's well enough in time. But when you start layering up multiple vocals, if they've got different timings, then it can start to sound a little bit of a train wreck. Especially on your consonants and S's, as those sounds stick out a lot, and when you get two of them at two different times, it really sticks out in a mix. So I'll reference these two together now soloed. Raise your glass at the midnight dawning Raise your hands to the DJ calling Raise your spirits in this midnight mass Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? Cause... Okay, so you can hear a couple of points in there where there are consonants and S's in the vocals which don't perfectly line up and you hear a kind of flam sound. So in FL Studio, what I'll do is I'll double click on each of the audio files and go to de-clicking then set this to generic bleeding. And all this does is when you put a cut in the audio, it puts this little crossfade in, so you'll never get any clicking. And it also means that if you chop up two parts and move them together, they crossfade together. So this is what's going to make it easier for me to do all my edits. Now I need to listen through all the vocals and I'm going to move the second vocal into time with the reference vocal. Raise your glass at the midnight dawning Raise your hands to the DJ calling So here we go, there's one here To the DJ You get a kind of flam on the D in DJ So I'm going to cut here And then you'll also hear that the same flam happens here DJ DJ So I'm also going to put a cut in here Then switch back to my pencil tool Just hold down alt and move this across You can see when it will be in time and remember to check it with your ears as well. Hands to the DJ calling. There's also a little bit of an earliness on this one, so I'll move that back into time, and that should be it. To the DJ calling. Raise the spirits in this midnight mass. There's a little bit of one here. You might not need to do this one, it's not such a big flam, but just for perfection's sake here. Midnight mass. Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? Cause and again, these last two phrases. Ready to dance, cause. So there we go, we have a listen to that. Raise your glass at the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. Raise the spirits in this midnight mass. Raise the roof, are you ready to dance, cause. There we go. Raise your glass at the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling Raise the spirits in this midnight mass Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? Cause... So by now you might have noticed that all my vocal tracks have got quite a lot of effects on and until now I've had them switched off using the effect switches at the bottom of the inserts but now I'm going to take you through my vocal processing chain just listening to the lead vocal Raise your glass at the midnight dawning. The first thing I've got in my chain is an EQ, and all this is doing is high passing it gently at just above 200 Hz. So this is taking off a little bit of the boom and low end in Pob's notes. And doing this helps make space for things like bass and your kick and your snare, but also means that the vocals blend more easily into your mix because when they've got a lot of low ends, they can sound like they're sitting on top of it which might be desirable, but generally when I hear that in music, I think I want to hear more of the instrumental. This is the difference that makes. 
Raise your glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. Raise your spirits in this midnight mass. Raise the roof. Are you ready to dance? Cause. So you can hear that thins out his voice, but once you put it in a mix with bass and kick and snare, you don't really notice that it's so thin. The next thing I've got in my chain is a patcher preset that I've created. And this is a parallel chain, but I've used patcher to create the chain, because then I can keep it all in one audio track instead of using another one. But for the sake of showing you how to do this with compatibility for other DAWs, here's the exact same chain, but on a parallel bus that I created earlier. Now, I could have just grabbed any old frequency exciter and shoved it onto the track, but what this tends to do is, although it adds a lot of bite and crispness to the high end, it will also boost things like sibilance, and it doesn't give me a lot of control over which frequencies are being excited. So it's a lot more useful to know how to build your own excitement chains. The first thing in my chain here, if I switch off my main vocal track, so you're only going to hear the chain, is a fairly harsh high pass filter. And that's at about 3.5 kHz, but tune it to wherever sounds good to you. If you want to have it lower or higher, then that's up to you. And the next part of it is a boost at about 12 kHz. Now this is a frequency that you should tune to a non-sibilant frequency. As every vocalist is different, their voice will have certain frequency ranges which are more sibilant than others. So try and select one which isn't very sibilant and instead just boosts a lot of the air in their voice. So you can hear that's quite a sibilant one, whereas 12 kHz with pop is a lot more airy. You'll always get some kind of sibilance boost, but the next part of the chain will help negate that. So the next thing I've got is what's going to add bite, and it's a bit of light distortion. You can use heavy distortion if you want, but I wanted a fairly clean, clear vocal here, and this is the difference that that makes. So that adds a lot more bite to the excitement chain. The remaining problems I've got now are because of the amount of processing I've put on, I get problems like boosts in sibilance, and what I need to fix that is a compressor. So this is going to level out the dynamics a lot and make it more even for when I blend it back in with the mix. And this is the difference that my compression makes. That's quite heavy compression, but once I blend it back in with the original vocal, it's going to make the vocal sound very clear and crisp because you can always hear that high end. So I'll turn that back on and also turn back on my original vocal, and then I'm going to blend the two together. Raise your glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. Raise your spirits in this midnight mass. And you can hear that when I cut and boost this, it makes a huge difference to the amount of air in there. Raise your glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. So that's a really cool way to get a very commercial and professional sounding vocal. And this is an effect which is always used in pop music. Whenever you hear a really loud, punchy, clear vocal, this is the kind of processing they've used on it. So go crazy and create your own chains because you can get some very cool effects. Now the next thing I've got on the main vocal is a compressor. And this is pretty basic vocals compression. Nothing really crazy is required here. Raise your glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. Because Pop is quite a consistent vocalist anyway, all I've really had to do is take off some of the louder notes. But then later in my chain, when the vocals get combined, you'll see I've also got another compressor, but I'll get to that later. The last thing I've got on here is a little cut at 4600 hertz, and the only reason I did this was because I felt that there was a little bit of sharpness just there, and when you're heavily processing vocals, you can often end up with some ringing frequencies which you'll then have to cut out. This was mainly necessary though because this was round about the crossover between my excitement chain and the main vocal, so I needed that little cut at that point, but since it's not in my chain here, there's no point in having it in at this stage. So this is how my vocal now sounds. Raise your glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. At this stage, you could very easily call that vocal done. It sounds great, and it does everything that I would want my lead vocal to do. However, I've also got my second vocal layer to deal with, which, because it's not going to be the lead part which is out front, I want it to add something to the stereo field. So the first two effects I've got are, again, a high pass, and then I've also got the same excitement chain but without the distortion, so all it's doing is boosting the clarity but not adding any more bite to it. 
The next thing I've added is a fruity chorus, which is just a chorus effect. Raise a glass to the midnight dawning. It adds a lot of wideness to the vocal and when blended in with the lead vocal, achieves a much fuller sound. Raise a glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. Raise your spirits in this midnight mass. Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? The next thing is isotope vinyl. And the only thing I've done here is I've set the year to 1930. So it makes it sound like it's coming off a 1930s record player. Raise a glass to the midnight dawning. The next thing I've put in is actually another patcher chain and it's another excitement chain, but this time with the distortion. Although the vinyl effect sounded really good, I wanted it to have a bit more treble. Raise a glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. And now it's time for the compression. This is slightly heavier compression than I put on the main vocal because I want a lot more consistency, especially since I've got the chorus on there. It's not a very consistent vocal anymore. Raise a glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. And you'll see that I've set the attack to allow a bit of transient through and set the release to a fairly medium sized release, about 70 or 80 milliseconds. And the same goes for my lead vocal. Use your ears to tune these two controls because every vocal is different and it will also depend on your tempo what you use. But this is how it sounds now. Raise your glass at the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. And you'll hear that because I've put the limiter on, it's actually added a bit of delay. Now I could have used plug-in delay compensation to then fix this, but I didn't want to do that because I felt it added quite a lot to the character of the vocals. And finally, I've put on another EQ which has taken out a few cuts. Raise your glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. Raise your spirits in this midnight mass. And all this is doing is it's getting rid of a little bit of muddiness around 900 hertz and also getting rid of a bit of resonance around 5 kilohertz. So it makes the vocal sound a lot more neutral. Raise a glass to the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. Raise the spirits in this midnight mass. Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? Cause so finally, these two vocal layers are then combined into my main vocals bus. And here I've got Thrill Seeker LA, which is just putting a little bit more compression onto it. Raise a glass at the midnight dawning. And that boosts up the level nicely. And then finally, I've put on another EQ, which has rolled the low end a bit more again, because some of the effects I've put on have added a little bit of rumble. Then I've got a little bit of a lift above 2 kilohertz. And finally, there's a cutout of 3 kilohertz where there was a bit of resonance again. And what I'm going to do quickly before I show you the finished version is I've just taken off the excitement chain and I've put back in my patcher and EQ, because this is the way that I originally did the track. So here's the track so far. Raise your glass at the midnight dawning Raise your hands to the DJ calling Raise your spirits in this midnight mass Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? Cause... There we are, that's the production of the vocals. But there's one important thing left to do here, and that's the use of reverb and delay. Spatial effects like reverb and delay are really, really important for blending things into a mix because it puts everything in an acoustic environment, which is what our ears expect to hear when we hear sound. So as a general guide, reverb is great for blending a mix, but can make vocals sound washed out. On the other hand, it's also great at making a performance sound smooth and natural, so it's used on a lot of classical music for that reason. Delay is great at keeping vocals punchy, however, and just like reverb is great for blending a mix, but it doesn't wash vocals out. On the other hand, too much can quickly create a very cluttered and illegible sounding performance, so with both reverb and delay you've got to be quite careful not to put on too much. When I've got a vocals bus like this, I'll usually just use the main bus and put on reverb and delay with that. What I'm going to do is show you what a difference reverb makes to the mix. Raise your glass at the midnight dawning Raise your hands to the DJ calling Raise your spirits in this midnight mass Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? Cause... So you can hear that immediately made the vocals blend into the mix a lot better. And part of the reason this happens is because when our ears hear reverb, they assume a sound is further away, so they'll hear that sound as quieter. But you won't lose any of the clarity because the sound actually isn't quieter. 
And in that way, it's a really useful way to blend something into a mix and give presence to other instruments, while at the same time keeping the vocals nice and loud and clear. The same goes for delay, but it can be a much more drastic effect to use. Raise your glass at the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. Raise your spirits in this midnight mass. Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? Cause... So there we go, very similar kind of blending effect, but a very different character of vocal. Especially at the end of this phrase here where there's some space, the delay helps drive the rhythm a lot. Raise the spirits in this midnight mass. Raise the so it's a very useful effect for adding rhythm to a mix if you want to. But in the case of this mix in particular, I wanted the vocals to sound quite trancey while keeping the rhythm of a dubstep track. So I actually used both reverb and delay. Raise your glass at the midnight dawning. Raise your hands to the DJ calling. Raise your spirits in this midnight mass. Raise the roof, are you ready to dance? Cause so there we go, the vocals sound really nicely blended. Some people might say they sound a bit washed out, but I wanted a really wet sound in the verses, so that's what I did here. A last little note on spatial effects is that they can sometimes add some mud to the low end. So what I'll usually do is I'll high pass my spatial effects above about 200 hertz. That just means there's no way they can clash with the kick, snare or bass at all and add any muddiness. But that is pretty much it for vocals processing. I hope you've gotten something out of this, and there is the chance I'll do some more vocals processing videos in the future, covering some other styles of production if they're requested. So if you've got any requests, then head over to the Production Bytes Facebook page and leave a comment suggesting it. Also, please like, comment and subscribe, it really helps out the show, and I'll see you next time on Production Bytes. This midnight mass Raise the roof, are you ready?